greetings to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers, and my dear friends, and all of you are welcome to a new broadcasting, a completely new one, and the study of this is the school of prayer. This is your pastor, Yeti. <clears throat> if there is one thing I think the church needs to learn, it is that God means prayer to have an answer, and that it has not entered into the heart of man to conceive what God will to do for his child who gives himself to believe that his prayer will be heard. God hears prayer. This is a truth universally admitted, but of which very few understanding the meaning or experience the power. Christ in our life. In heaven, he always lives to pray, and his life in us is in every prayer life. If we will trust, just trust him for it. Christ teaches us to pray, not only by example, by instructions, by command, by promises, but by showing us himself, the ever-living incessor, as our life. It is when we believe this, then go and abide in him for our prayer life, too, that our fears of not being able to pray rightly will vanish. Then we shall joyfully and triumphantly trust our Lord to teach us to pray, to be himself the life and the power of our prayer. May God open our eyes to see what the holy ministry of intercession is, to which has his royal priesthood who have been set apart. May he give us a large and strong heart to believe what mighty influence our prayers can exert. And may all fears as to our being able to fulfill our calling vanish as we see Jesus living always to pray, the living and standing guarantee for our prayer life. So our first lesson is, Lord, teach us to pray, or the only teacher. And for that, we're going to read the scripture in Luke chapter 11, <clears throat> verse 1. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John thought his disciples. The disciples had been with Jesus and they had seen him pray. They had learned to understand something of the connection between his wondrous life in public and his secret life of prayer. They had learned to believe in him as a master in the art of prayer. No one could pray like him. And so they came to him with the request, Lord, Teach us to pray. And in later years, they would have told us that there were few things more wonderful or blessed. He taught them then his lessons on prayer. And now still it comes to pass, as he is praying in a certain place, that the disciples will see him engaged, this way feel the need to repeat the same Request, Lord, teach us to pray. As we grow in the Christian life, the thought and the faith of the beloved Master in His never-failing intercession becomes more 
and more precious, and the hope of being like Christ in his intercession gains an attractiveness before unknown. And as we see him pray, as we remember that there is no one who can pray like him, no one who can teach like him, we feel the request of the disciples. Lord, teach us to pray. It's just what we need. And as we think how all he is and has, how he himself is our very own, how he is himself our life, we feel assured that we need only ask and he will be delighted to take us up into closer fellowship with himself and teach us to pray just as he prays. Come, my brothers and sisters, shall we not go to the Blessed Master and ask him to enroll our names too, a new in that school that he always keeps open for those who long to continue their studies in the divine art of prayer and intercession? Yes, let us this very day say to the Master, as they did of old, Lord, teach us to pray as we meditate we shall find each word of the request we bring to the full of meaning. Lord, teach us to pray. Yes, to pray. This is what we need to be thought. Though in its beginnings prayer is so simple that the most helpless child can pray, yet it is at the same time the highest and holiest work to which man can rise. It is fellowship with the unseen and most holy one. The powers of the eternal world have been placed at its disposal. It is the very essence of true religion, the challenge of all blessings, the secret of power and life, and not only for ourselves, but for others, for the church, for the world. It is a prayer that God has given the right to take hold of him and his strength. It is on prayer that the promises wait for their fulfillment, the kingdom for its coming, the glory of God for its full revelation and for this blessed work. How lazy and unfit we are. It is only the Spirit of God who can enable us to do it rightly. How speedily we are deceived into resting in the form while the power is lacking. Our early training, the teaching of the church, the influence of habit, the steering of the emotions, how easily these lead to prayer that has no spiritual power and benefits but little. Try prayer that takes hold of God's strength, that benefits much, to which the gates of heaven are really opened wide. Who would not cry, oh, for someone to teach me to pray this way? Jesus has opened the school in which he trains his redeemed ones who specifically desire it to have power in prayer. Shall we not enter it with a request? Lord, it is just as we need to be thought. Oh, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Yes, us, Lord. We have read in your word, with what power you believing people of all used to pray, and what mighty powers and wonders were done in answering to their prayers. And if this took place under the old covenant in the time of preparation, how much more will you not now, in these days of fulfillment, give your people this sure sign of your presence in their midst? We have heard the promises given to your apostles of the power of prayer in your name, and we have seen how glorious they experienced their truth. We know for certain they can become true to us too. We hear continually, even in these days, what glorious proofs of your power you still give to those who trust you fully. Lord, these all are 
men and women with passions like our own, teach us to pray so too. The promises, the promises are for us, as are the powers and gifts of the heavenly world. O oh, teach us to pray so that we may receive abundantly. And to us too, you have entrusted your work on our prayer too. The coming of your kingdom depends in our prayer too. You can glorify your name. Lord, teach us to pray. Yes, us. Lord, for we offer ourselves as learners. We desire in Indeed, to be thought by you, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Yes, we feel the need now of being thought to pray. At first, there is no work that appears so simple, but later on, none that is more difficult. And the confession is forced from us. We don't know how to pray as we should. It is true we have God's word with its clear and sure promises. But sin has so darkened our mind that we don't always know how to apply the word. In spiritual things, we do not always seek the things most needed, or we fail in praying according to the law of the sanctuary. In earthly things, we are still less able to avail ourselves of the wonderful liberty our Father has given us to ask what we need. And even when we know what to ask, how much there is still needed to make prayer acceptable. It must be the glory of God in full surrender to His will, in full assurance of faith in the name of Jesus, and with a perseverance that, if it is needed, refuses to be denied. All this must be learned. It can only be learned in the school of much prayer. For practice makes perfect, amid the painful con consciousness of ignorance and unwordness. In the struggle between believing and doubting, the heavenly earth art of effectual prayer is learned. Because even when we do not remember it, there is one, the beginner and finisher of faith and prayer, who watches over us, praying as sees to it that in all who trust him for their education in the school of prayer shall be carried on the perfection. Let just the deep undertone of all prayer be the teachableness, teachableness that comes from a sense of ignorance and from faith in him as a perfect teacher. And then we may be sure we shall be taught. We shall learn to pray in power. Yes, we may depend upon it. He teaches to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. No one can teach like Jesus, no one but Jesus. And therefore we call on him, Lord, teach us to pray. A pupil needs a teacher who knows his work, who has the gift of teaching, who in patience and love will descend to the people's needs. Blessed be God. Jesus is all this and much more. He knows what prayer is. It is Jesus praying himself who teaches to pray. He knows what prayer is. He learned it admit to trials and tears of his earthly life. In heaven it's still his beloved work. His life there is prayer. Nothing delights him more than to find those whom he can take with him into the Father's presence. Whom he can clothe with power to pray down God's blessing on those around him. When he can train to be his fellow workers, in the intercessions by which the kingdom is to be revealed on earth. He knows how to teach. Now by the urgency of felt need, then by the confidence with which joy inspires, there by the teaching of the word, there by the testimony of another believer who knows 
what it is to have prayer heard. By his Holy Spirit, he has access to our heart. And he teaches us to pray by showing us the sin that hinders the prayer. Or giving us the assurance that we please God. He teaches by giving not only thoughts of what to ask or how to ask, but by breathing within us the very spirit of prayer, by living within us as the great intercessor. We may indeed and most joyfully say, Who teaches like him? Jesus never taught his disciples how to preach, only how to pray. He did not speak much of what was needed to preach well, but much of praying well. To know how to speak to God is more than knowing how to speak to man. Not power with man, but power with God is the first thing. And Jesus loves to teach us how to pray. Why do you think, my beloved people, would it not be just what we need to ask the Master for a month to give us a course of special lessons, lessons and the art of prayer? As we meditate on the words he spoke on earth, let us yield ourselves to his teaching in the fullest confidence that with such a teacher we shall make progress. Let us take time not only to meditate, but to pray, to wait at the foot of the throne and be trained to the work of intercession. Let us do so in the assurance to admit our stammerings and fears. He is carrying on his work most beautifully. He will breath his own life, which is all prayer into us. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, we always live to pray, who always lives to pray. You can teach me to to pray, me, to, to live always to pray. In this you love to make me share your glory in heaven, so that I should pray without ceasing and always stands as a priest in the presence of my God. Lord Jesus, I ask you today to enroll my name among those who confess that they don't know how to pray, as they should and especially ask you, for a course of teaching in prayer. Lord, teach me to wait with you in the school and to give you time to train me. May a deep sense of my ignorance, of the wonderful privilege and power of prayer, of my need for the Holy Spirit as a spirit of prayer, lead me to cast away my thoughts of what I think I know and make me feel before you in true teachableness and poorness of spirit. And fill me, Lord, with the confidence that with such a teacher as you, I shall learn to pray. In the assurance that I have as my teacher, Jesus, who is always praying to the Father, and by his prayer rules the destinies of his church and the world, I will not be afraid. As much I need to know of the mysteries of the prayer world, you will reveal to me. And when I may not know, you will teach me to be strong in faith, giving glory to God. Blessed Lord, you will not put to shame your student who trusts you, nor by your grace would he you either. Amen. My beautiful people, take your time to take these words to you as we ask, Lord, teach us to pray. And I believe strongly that the Holy Spirit will lead us in that we come to an understanding that we grow in prayer. We will see 
that our life also will be changed. Because there is a deeper part in us that comes to the awareness that as we open our mouth, that God will fill us, but also that God, who is not deaf, will always listen to his children. And that he trains us and that he teaches us to having a heart for prayer, for the need we see around us, for the need of the church, for the need of your brothers and sisters and for your own need. And don't hesitate to ask your Father, Father, how can I pray? How can I pray for this need? And sometimes it is just simple words, but it's about the intensity of that word. Not of a lot of words. And close the door in your upper room and open your heart and let God speak to you. May God bless your heart. And may the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart be acceptable in the Lord's sight. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. This is your pastor, Yeti. Bye.